Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ardis Washington, and I'm the Deputy Director for the Department of Navy's Office of Small Business Program, which is led by our distinguished director, Mr. Jimmy Smith. On behalf of Mr. Smith, we would like to thank you for joining us today. Welcome to our webinar series, where we've been hosting webinars on various topics throughout the summer. You can view previously recorded videos on our website under the Outreach tab in the toolbar, click on Past Events, or you can visit our YouTube channel. I would like to direct you to our website at www.secnav.navy.mil backslash small business, where you can find a wealth of information, including our Department of Navy's Office of Small Business Programs Operations Plan, locate your small business professional, and find information on how to do business with the Don, including the command's long range acquisition forecast. To learn more about upcoming events, you can register for our mailing list on the homepage of our website. And I encourage you to connect with us on social media, including our platforms on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and our YouTube channel. We have two upcoming events. One will be held tomorrow the NAV Air Small Business Roundtable. So I highly encourage you to register for that event and you can do so on our Facebook or LinkedIn platforms or send an email to osbp.pao at navy.mil to register. We also have an event on November 4th, which we will be co-hosting with the Women-Owned Small Business Program Manager uh, Ms. Elisa Sherd. That will be on November 4th at 1 o'clock. More details will be followed soon. Please subscribe to our mailing list to register for that event. So today we have Mr. Ken Karkev, who's the Small Business Learning Director for the Defense Acquisition University. Ken will talk to us today about DAU initiatives and doing business with the Department of Defense. So before I turn it over to Ken, I hope you seize the opportunity to ask questions using the Q&A feature in this platform. So over to you, Ken. Thank you very much, Arvise. And I want to give everybody a great, hearty uh, Navy and Marine Corps welcome. Uh, as Arvise mentioned, my name is Ken Karkoff. I'm the Learning Director at Defense Acquisition University, and I will talk to you momentarily about what that really means. But first of all, I want to make sure that I thank Mr. Jimmy Smith. Uh, it's been great to work with him. Uh, thank Arvis for helping uh, get me established today and invite me to speak to the audience and also Destiny for all the help that she's brought to getting me set up in, in, in Zoom. Uh, mo not most, but some of you probably know me. Uh, I was in the Department of the Navy for about a little over 40 years before I transitioned out in the spring of 2019, went to the Pentagon with the Air Force in the uh, Secretary of the Air Force Small Business Office for a little while, and I reported to DAU back in August of uh, 2019 as the learning director, I actually took uh, Sherry's place. Who had, uh, I think everybody was uh, very familiar or still is familiar with Sherry Freeman. Uh, she was a real uh, superstar in the small business community. So what that means is the learning director, uh, I own all of the learning assets uh, at DAU that are small business related. So I am responsible for maintenance and updates of the existing assets and uh, development of new assets. I don't do it all myself. Uh, we work collaboratively, but basically it's uh, cradle to grave. Uh, I also have the pleasure of being a small business professor, uh, although uh, I don't teach all the classes uh, as much as all the small business professors, but I do teach each of the four uh, classroom courses. So it's it's a great pleasure. So this opportunity is really going to be focused on uh, on DAU. What can DAU do uh, for industry and how can we work collaboratively? Because I really believe it's key uh, that we collaborate together uh, across the, uh, you know, the, the fence. We, we need to make sure that we're, we're talking to our acquisition workforce and we're talking to our small business partners in the defense industrial base. So I'd like to go to uh, the next slide. That's my email. You can reach out to me anytime. I just want to say that. Uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime. So next slide there, Destiny. 
Okay, they, these are the, these are actually new slides from DAU. So if you're used to DAU slides, I think they're going to look a little bit different. Uh, the format is a little bit different, and obviously the logo uh, for some of you that are have been around DAU for quite a while are going to say, "Wow, that's a new logo." Uh, so DAU is in the process of a, a transformation uh, because we now know that the DoD acquisition workforce uh, requires speed and agility, and in order to help the DoD uh, acquisition work workforce uh, to accomplish this. DA, DAU is transforming uh, the look, the feel, and the way we do business. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, everything we do uh, enables the acquisition workforce uh, to get the products and services uh, to our DOD warfighters. DAU is focusing on three major uh, areas. One is effortless learning, which means it's going to. We want to make it easier for the learner uh, to get to the information they need when they need it and it's right there for them. The second thing we're looking at is world-class content. Uh, DAU has been around for a long time, and we want to make sure that, uh, that everything we have is current, it's relevant, it's useful, and you can get to it. And the last thing that we're looking for is a dynamic network, and that includes industry, that includes the acquisition workforce. It's connecting someone or a learner that has a need or needs information to someone in the network that has that information uh, when they need it. Uh, that's part of the logo transformation you'll see down there. The logo has changed. Uh, it's skinnied a little bit, and it's uh, tilted a little bit to the right. We got a little bit of right wing down. I flew helicopters for the Navy, so I'll use aviation example. So we're just a little bit right wing down on the DAU logo. Uh, it symbolizes that it's a little leaner, so it's more agility. Uh, it's leaning forward, and it's also uh, bringing innovation, and we maintained, uh, this is white, but the official DAU logo is red, but because this brief here is, is white on red, but the official DAU logo colors are red. We want to maintain our, our branding, because DAU has been around for a while, and we want to maintain that DAU branding. So you could take a look at the vision and the mission statement. That's what we're doing. Uh, bottom line is we want to make sure that everything we do, that warfighter gets the decisive edge. We want our warfighters to be able to get the mission done and get home safely to their family. You've heard the senior leadership in the Navy across DOD say it. You know, we never want to be in a fair gunfight. We always want to make sure that we're bringing uh, – everything we have and we're imposing our will to the enemy and we're doing things on our timetable and places of our time and choosing. Uh, so we, we have a global learning environment. Uh, there's folks all around the world that support DOD and need to get that training. So uh, we want to make sure that the, the job one is to help you succeed. Uh, we want DA uh, a first thought because there is competition out there for training, but DAU is no longer going to be just come to DAU and sit in a classroom for a week or two. Some cases it's four weeks or more for a course. Uh, it's going to be a lot more agile. All the classes we're teaching right now are virtual. Uh, right now, I don't think we're going to have any classroom courses. Uh, there might be some in, in Q2, uh, but right now, very, very few courses, uh, if any, will be taught uh, in, in class right now uh, for the first foreseeable future. So next slide. Okay, for those of you that are not familiar with DAU, uh, we are located at multiple uh, campuses. Uh, the primary campus is at the, it's called the Capital of Northeast Region. Uh, it is home with at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, just south of uh, Washington and Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, my location is there. I'm actually uh, homeroomed in the uh, Fort Belvoir campus. Uh, we have the Mid-Atlantic Region, uh, which is right there next to a Naval Air Systems Command. So it was very nice to leave the base and drive about 10 minutes and get to training or leave my house and that was in between my house and getting to uh, Nav Air if you were going to be there for the, the day training because uh, I, I actually reside in Southern Maryland. Uh, we have a Southern uh, region down there at Huntsville, Alabama, so there's a lot of things going on down there with the Army and MDA. Uh, we have a large campus in the Midwest at Kettering, which is primarily supporting uh, uh, the Air Force and, and what goes on out there with the large Air Force uh, Materiel Command and, and the commands out there. And then for those that have had an opportunity, uh, we have the region out there in sunny San Diego. Everybody loves that one. My first tour of duty was flying helicopters out of Coronado. So uh, so that's where we, uh, that's the sites right now. But uh, without class, in classroom training, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can take a course uh, through any region. And and you do it virtually. 
So, and there are some satellite locations. I'm not going to go through each one of those, but there are smaller DAU locations as well where there may be a, a handful of staff or the ability to interface. So we want to make sure that we're there to support the customer. Next slide. Okay, learning options. Uh, right now, we would like to say classroom is a learning option. Uh, at some point, classroom learning will be uh, an option. We do not intend to get rid of all classroom training at DAU. Uh, there are some classes that uh, it is preferential uh, to do them in a classroom environment. And when we return to uh, our campuses, when the DOD workforce uh, returns, uh, DAU right now is uh, no one's working at a DAU site right now. But when the workforce does return, uh, there will be some classes that will revert back to classroom classes. Uh, one of the classes that we have for small business, SBP 301, uh, it is a uh, eight-day class uh, spread over two weeks. Uh, it uh, potentially may uh, revert back to a classroom class. Uh, that would be nice. But the majority of the training is going gonna, is gonna to be online. Uh, and there's two types of online training. So I want to make sure that we get the information correctly so we understand the terms. Online training would be absolutely where you take re register a class it is not a classroom class so you enroll in the class and you participated on your own time logging into the class going through the slides taking the quizzes whatever the requirements are and then completing the class you enroll and you stay enrolled till you complete it the other method is the virtual which actually primarily is actually enrolling into a system DAU primarily uses WebEx, so you enroll into the, log into the system, and you have an instructor or instructors that are actually facilitating the class uh, generally the entire time. There's a little, a few classes where there may be a little uh, time where it is not instructor-led, but generally it's, uh, it's instructor-led. So that is how the virtual instructor-led classes are taught. The class is virtual. The campus, you can get into it. Uh, we offer certification training. That's what you need to get certified. Uh, right now, it's the three level, but with the back to basics memo, things are changing. Uh, credentials, they are not core training. They are training beyond uh, the core training. There's a couple credentials that DAU is piloting right now. Uh, one is uh, services acquisition for the uh, acquisition workforce and for the non-acquisition workforce. Uh, there's one also, I think, out there on cyber. Uh, continuous learning, we all need to make sure we're keeping up our, our continuous learning points so you can do that and help you get your, your 80 hours over your two years. So there's lots of courses and lots of learning categories that currently exist today at DAU. This is all available to government and industry uh, has access to what DAU does provide. Uh, right now, there is no cost uh, to go to DAU, uh, but down the road with competition, we want DAU to be the preferred place to go to get the acquisition workforce training. Next. So Ken, we have one question. Okay. Are there plans to add another SBP 301 course in fiscal year 21? And this is coming okay. from a small business professional. Okay, right now, uh, DAU typically schedules a class, the class schedule on a fiscal year basis. But because of COVID and because of the impacts of COVID and, and virtual training, we only schedule the first six months of the fiscal year. The second half of the fiscal year schedule, I think, will be available to industry uh, right about Thanksgiving time. Traditionally, SBP 301 has been offered once a year. So right now, it is scheduled to be a virtual class in the first two weeks of March, I checked yesterday. Uh, I think we're at 11 or 12 quotas, but we have we can go up to 20. So there is some space in that class for those to enroll. Uh, there is not a plan to hold a second uh, SBP 301 class this fiscal year. And unless there's going to be a request from the services, the customers, that they need a an additional or more than one SBP 301 class annually, I expect it'll probably remain uh, one off offering per year. So long-winded answer right now, it's going to probably remain uh, one class per year. So we have another question, Ken. Okay. The cybersecurity maturity model certification. So we know that's uh, top on everyone, both uh, internal uh, civilian workforce, our small business professionals out there, but also external uh, with industry. 
Is there going to be a training certificate um, information, anything you can share about that? Uh, I, I will. There's a slide later on in the brief that gives you a little information. So let's kind of let that speak for itself as we get down there. I, and I definitely acknowledge CMMC is, is, a, is a hot topic on, on everybody's mind. Thank you, sir. Okay, great. Thanks, RVs. Okay, so we're on the iCatalog slide. Basically, it's the, you know, informational catalog. It's the online uh, interactive catalog. You go there. It's in Seaside. You use that as a resource uh, to search for courses, what courses are available, a little description of the course, any prerequisites, expected uh, hours for the course, particularly if it's online. Uh, the way we get the hours for the class is we, we every so often uh, we'll take a measurement of students that uh, register in the online classes. Uh, it times them when you're actually inside that course taking the class. We get an average measurement. Uh, that's what we use to tell you. So if, the, if it says the class takes approximately eight hours to complete, uh, that's based on uh, recent student uh, timelines that we're tracking. And then that timeline, time tracker, is used uh, to award the CLPs. So you can get a lot of that information. If there's any predecessor courses uh, that were there before this course uh, replaced it, it gives you a summary of the course and any other specific course information. Uh, there's other ways to get course credit, certification, all types of things that are there. Uh, there's also the career development guide, core plus guides. All that exists right now for the current uh, training right now under the three level certification. Uh, but this is a, a real good uh, resource for everybody. Another key is sometimes there's alternate ways to meet your training requirements. So maybe you don't need to go to DAU. Maybe you can go to one of the uh, colleges or universities that has an agreement with DAU, and that class that they teach uh, is equivalent to what DAU would teach, and you can get credit for it that way for film. And I know, for example, uh, when I took my master's degree, I uh, finished it in 2019, the con uh, Master of Systems and Contract Management through the Naval Postgraduate School, uh, some of the courses uh, naturally fa uh, fit uh, right into fulfillment in the contracting curriculum. So, uh, you, you know, if you're in a, core, a college, make sure you, you see what they're teaching and then see if there is a, uh, uh, you know, there's an agreement with DAU uh, that that would give you uh, credit for uh, your training. So that's a good thing. Next slide. While we and, flip the slides, we do have another question. Okay. Do any of these courses provide continuing education certifications for civilians, specifically looking at some areas, for example, if the uh, certified federal contract manager, any of these courses, our DAU courses, uh, provide certifications or continuous learning education points towards that? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the specifics of that. I do know that for the, for the contracting workforce, uh, they don't really get certified in, in the DOD workforce. They get credit for the classes. So I'd, I'd have to look at, I'd, I'd have to get back to you on that one if there is any that ties specifically to a civilian or a non-DOD acquisition workforce uh, certification credit. So if you can maybe send me that email and uh, the, the, the questions that I can't answer or fully answer today, I will make sure I get the answers and, and get them back to everybody. Because what I want to make sure is everybody fully understands what's available and, and how to go through it. And times are changing. There's a lot of moving parts right now. So if I don't know the answer right now, I'll be honest with you and tell you, I, I don't know the answer. So that's one I will uh, have you put on your list and uh, I'll get back on that one. And, and just to add a little bit more for the audience here is um, that certified federal contract manager is under the uh, NCMA, uh, the National Contract Management Association. Um, so I think that what they're looking for is if they are certified under NCMA as a certified federal contract manager, will these continuous learning points um, apply to that. But we'll take that for action. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. And just a little uh, follow-up to that comment then is uh, with the new development and the new contracting career training, which likely will be single level, but we'll see. Uh, the, they did look at NMC, NCMA processes and some of that is being mapped to, to that process as well. So uh, there's going to be more, more to follow. Okay. Uh, next is the CLPs. Uh, that's a great thing. You can go in there and, and you can take uh, continuous training. Uh, there's really two 
um, courses there are ways of doing it one would be a, a, a CLC uh, which is a continuous learning course and then there, that's that's usually um, two you know one two three four hours and you complete it generally you have to pass a quiz or an exam uh, either at the end or maybe as you go through the modules and then we have CLM uh, continuing learning modules uh, they tend to be a little longer uh, they can be up upwards of eight to ten hours or more notional timeline to complete those courses uh, that's how the CLPs are awarded but you can uh, anybody can enroll government or industry can enroll in any one of those classes that are online classes CLC CLMs take those classes and for the government workforce, get your CLPs. For the uh, industry folks, uh, you'll get uh, at least credit for completing, uh, it, it, you know, for, that you can use for your career progression, at least show that you've completed training in this area. And I have a couple courses that, uh, that I have for you that I'll recommend. Next. Next slide. Okay, this is kind of what the, the meat and potatoes is going to be, is the DAU Small Business Initiatives. So like I said, I started at DAU back in August of 2019, so just uh, you know a little over a year that I've been there. So we've been able to do some pretty neat things uh, from a small business focus that I just want to share with the group. So this is kind of the, you know, we're, 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 this is kind of a meat and potatoes brief, so we're really at the meat right now, and hopefully this is what everyone really is, is going to be interested in learning. How can we work collaboratively with government and in industry, helping those small businesses uh, that are such a critical part of our industrial uh, base. So let's uh, flip the slide here. Okay, so the first one is the, these are the existing DAU small business courses. So about three or four years ago, DAU deployed nine small business classes that were developed to train the small business workforce, the small business professionals. Others can enroll in a class, but the highest priority would be a someone that you know that is in that billet that needs the training. So these were the classes that were going to support the small business uh, career field, which now there is no career field. So the classes still exist, uh, and these classes are available uh, online or virtually. So if you see a V, it's a virtual uh, class. That means it's, it is taught virtually. It would normally be a classroom class. It's taught virtually with one or two instructors uh, teaching the class. So there's the list of the, of the, of the classes. Um, I think the slides are going to be available, so I'm not going to read every, every one to you. But it, it goes through a, a three level, which kind of mapped to the three level certification that DIWEA currently has. So we had a 100 level, which is basically the introduction, basic fundamentals, your basic blocking and tackling. Uh, then we also had the 200 level, which is intermediate. Uh, then we had a advanced level or, or senior leader level, which is the, the 300 level clock, uh, course. So we set the courses to follow to mirror what was at the time going to be a three level certification. Uh, some of the courses had prerequisites or recommendations. Take this one before that one. So, for example, right now, if you are a in a, uh, looking to take SVP 102 V, which is the classroom class, uh, that you would need to take SVP 101, which is the predecessor. You would need to complete the online class. It's about seven or eight hours before you're eligible to take uh, SVP 102 V. Uh, the VILT. Now, some of the things that we've done with the classes, originally SVP 102, when it was taught as a classroom class, and I think the last time it was taught as a classroom class uh, in, in residence was back in February, it was, it was a 36 hour class. You went all day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You came in Friday. You did the last uh, session. You, you did the review. You did all your other, other stuff, and then you passed your exam and you're out of there around midday Friday. So it was about a 36 hour class. Uh, based on uh, feedback and collaboration with our VIS and uh, the uh, Pam, who's the deputy at the Army, and Jamie, the deputy director at the Air Force, and uh, Shannon, a DOD OSBP deputy, uh, we made some changes to the courses as we went into the VILT structure. So SVP 102 is now about a 25 hour class. So there's la less class time to complete the class. We still teach it over a week. Uh, we give you five hours of instruction over a six hour day. So it's changed a little bit. And, and not everybody's doing it that way, but on that class 102, that's how we elected to do it. Uh, the same thing happened in SVP 201.
201 and 202. If you go to the intermediate level, you have to take SVP 201 first online. It's about a seven or eight hour class. And then you come and take the SVP 202 VILT, the uh, instructor led class. Same thing, that was originally about 36 hours in a classroom. Uh, it is now 25 hours uh, virtually. The subcontracting class, SBP 210, uh, we converted out to a VILT. Uh, we did not decrease. It's still uh, a full one-week class uh, when we go back eventually. Uh, primarily, it will be taught as a VILT, but I th I'm thinking, don't hold me to it, but uh, we may have maybe one offering a year or so that might be a, a classroom class, but uh, I, I don't know. That, that's TBD, but uh, I'd say right now there's probably about 80 to 85% of uh, the 210 offerings would be uh, a VILT. And then we have the 301 class. That, that's the leadership class. Uh, that works best in residence, but we taught it as a VILT. Our VIS was in the class. Uh, I think it went well. We were able to do some things in the VILT structure that we probably could not have done uh, in a classroom class. I think it was, uh, I think everybody had fun. We all learned a lot, and I think we got it done. So we're going to do it again in March, and we'll see where that winds up. So next, uh, next slide. Okay, these are some recommended courses, okay? And, and what I'm saying, these are recommended from me. These are not DAU recommendations. These are just re courses that I recommend because I know that I'm talking primarily, to, or not primarily, but a lot of industry folks. So these are all courses that you can register for and take online. CLM 059, Fundamentals of the Small Business for the Acquisition Workforce. That right now is required level one for contracting officers. Uh, it is not required for any other career field, but it's it, but because it's 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 uh, required for contracts. Uh, it's got a lot of detail in it. Uh, we recommend program managers take it. It is a good overview of the small business program. So if you're in industry and you want to get a good overview of what are we teaching uh, our contracting officers, recommending our program managers take on the small business program, this will be a good class to take. Uh, there's a market research class. It's a it's a three or four hours. Uh, there's a class on a service disabled veteran owned small business program. That's a, a couple hours. A partnering program. It talks about how to partner with uh, other uh, partners when you do contracting. So I know that small businesses are oftentimes uh, looking for partnering and how to, how to do things. So that may be something that might, you might want to look into. Uh, then we have CLC 059, the Management of Subcontracting Compliance. That's a new course. Uh, it was written to replace an older course, which was really outdated, and it was not really a fun class to take. Uh, this has all been updated. So this is how the government is, is required to make ensure that subcontracting compliance is, is being being done from a government perspective, working with industry for the large businesses when they're managing uh, their subcontracting plans and reporting uh, through the ESRS system. So that would be something. And then the last one down there, the CON class, the uh, PTAC awareness, that's less than an hour. It's about, it's three videos. You answer a couple questions. If you are not familiar with what the PTACs, the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers that fall under the Procurement Technical Assistance Program, which is owned by Defense Logistics Agency, government or industry, uh, it's a real good class. It's brand new. We just started it, I think, back in April. Uh, I think we've had several hundred folks take it already, so I think it's a pretty sought-after class, but I recommend that. It's a good overview of what the PTACs do for industry and how they can help government acquisition folks as well. So I recommend that. There's all the information on how to access the uh, or to register. Uh, you do need a CAC or a DAU account. So if you're government, uh, you have it, you should be able to do it. If you're an industry, you need to get a hold of DAU and have them register you and establish you an account that you can activate to get in uh, to use uh, the, the CSOD system, CSOD, Cornerstone on Demand, which is the system that DAU uses now to monitor and manage all of the course registrations and enrollments. But uh, the help desk should be able to help you out and, and take care of that for you. So, and you can get to the website there. It has all the information. Uh, if you need to get to the help desk, it'll help you right there and how to talk to the DAU help desk. Okay, next slide. While we're flipping to the next slide, Ken, I would just like to note that the slides will be made available on the OSBP website under past events. So um, it's a lot of great information here with uh, links to how to go about registering for these events for both civilian and industry personnel. 
Back over to you, Ken. Okay, thanks, RV. So I like this. I like this team, dual piloted here. We're doing great. So this this is going to be where we're going to camp a little bit. We're going to talk about the slide a wee bit, and then I'm going to take you actually to that website and do a little web demo. Demo. I know it's always risky doing a web demo live, but we're we're going to try it. And and uh, Destiny and I are going to try to get it get through it and uh, show you some things because it's uh, it's pretty cool. So industry support page. So back to, uh, last fall, uh, Miss Lord, who's our boss, you know, Undersecretary of uh, Defense for Acquisition Sustainment, went to uh, our boss at DAU and said, hey, really like to see DAU come up with a website forward facing to industry on how to work with the federal government, primar primarily, obviously, DOD. So we went out and we did. Uh, we looked at the uh, DOD, OSBP. We looked at Army, Navy, Air Force. Uh, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we wanted to keep things as green as possible. So they're living, they're reuse. So we uh, inherited some things, we updated some things, and we colluded them together. And we came up with what is an industry support page uh, that is there for industry to learn how to do business with DOD. Uh, it is also a good resource for acquisition uh, folks. So if you're program manager, you're contracting, you're small business, uh, there's resources that are on that page that you may not know are available for you to use and help you out. So that was in response uh, to a tasker. Uh, it also features the DOD Small Business Strategy, uh, which at the time was uh, was fairly new, October 2019. It was published. I believe it was the first one that we had uh, mapped to the National Defense Strategy. Uh, there's a doing business with the DOD toolkit uh, that was developed by DOD Industrial Policy. Uh, they actually, uh, the DOD Office of Small Business Programs reports to uh, DOD industrial policy, so they we have a they have a direct tie-in. As a matter of fact, Miss Murray, who's the director of DOD OSBP, is actually filling in a, a, a deputy director position under industrial policy right now as well, being dual-hatted. Uh, there's an all things small business podcast, which I started about uh, two months ago. So we're going to try to get a podcast up in the Apple Podcast Fair uh, every three or four weeks, uh, talking about anything that uh, re relates to small business, it would be of interest to industry and government. There's three that are posted right now, and I think we're going to get ready to have the fourth one up probably within a week or so. Uh, they're pretty neat, so we'd like you to know that those are there. You could use those as a, uh, a micro-learning. You could get a small business professional, and you could get a couple folks in a room, and you could click on it, and you could get your small business uh, training done with a contracting team or a program management team because they're, they're all themed. Uh, one of them talks about uh, working with the government and some of the barriers. Uh, I think one's about more about a women-owned small business program. So there's things that you could use as a training tool. And then there also is the upcoming DAU events. DAU is really uh, going out uh, with virtual, doing a lot of webinars and webcasts. And I think we've had, uh, I don't know, a, a, a huge increase, probably a, a 80 or 90% increase in participation in DAU events. Uh, now that they're being held virtually because you can do them from anywhere. So if you haven't participated in a DAU event, there's a schedule of upcoming events. There's a lot of them on CMMC and cyber. Uh, that is a very, very, very popular theme. So a shout out to the, the, whoever asked the cyber question. But there's a lot that goes on DAU with training on, on cyber issues. Ms. Lord speaks every now and then. Uh, so there's an opportunity to hear her speak and take some questions. So let's try to go to the industry page here. And I think we're going to go to share share my screen here. So do I need to share uh, do I need to go share my screen uh, Destiny? Yes, you'll share your screen. Okay, so I got to where's that uh, at the view up top here? Down the bottom, share Down screen. The, I'll share that's it. Share. You told me yesterday I'm a slow learner, okay? All right. And then let me see, share. And then what I need to know is that when, uh, let me know that you're looking at a, a website that is, let me, I got to go to the top here. You're good to go. I can see okay. the website. Okay. So this is the DO uh, doing business with the Department of Defense. This is home roomed on the uh, DAU public facing website. So you go to the uh, DAU public website, but the link is in a brief to get you right here. And then if you go to the hamburger menu up here and you click on it, it'll say industry support. 
and you click on that and then lo and behold it'll take you right here so we wanted to come up with a theme that says hey there's a lot of things that go on uh with doing business with the department of fence so whether it's deep thinking and very smart people you know the pentagon uh it's innovation uh it's all kinds of technology and lots of moving parts uh it's a whole different world out there and you can see in here in the green uh there's all kinds of products uh I think there's a helicopter right here, so we got that going. But there are all kinds of things to show the products. The, the key we wanted to show is there's a lot of things that go on to doing business uh, with the department. And then you can scroll down or vert here, or you can click on an element, and it'll take you right there. So we started at the top. So we had sharpening the DOD's competitive edge. This was a, a summary of the 2018 National Defense Strategy that was signed out under the former Secretary of Defense, uh, Mr. Mattis, the Honorable Mr. Mattis. Uh, that still is in play. So there's three lines of effort uh, that you have with the National Defense Strategy. So it's building the lethal force, strengthening uh, alliances and partnerships, and reforming DOD's business practices. All three of those areas, small businesses play. So we wanted to have that up here. So if you, if you are an industry and you haven't read at least this, the unclassified summary of the 2018 NDS, I really make, would recommend that you read this because when you market DOD, you need to know what's, what are we really doing, where are we going, what are we looking for, and how does it fit into uh, what we – how do you fit what your capability is into the DOD uh, buying environment. So this is a, a shout out to take a look at that. And we give you a link right here to get you to the document. The next thing is, as we drill down, is the DOD uh, small business strategy. So this was required by public law. So Congress said, hey, DOD OSBP, publish a strategy. Uh, it was released in October 2019. I think it was available for everybody uh, in November. I think it's dated October, but it was available in, no, in no, November. Uh, it's available uh, in a PDF format. Uh, we have a quote right here uh, from uh, the current Secretary of Defense, Mr. Esper. So you take a look at it, it talks about things that are going on, acquisition and sustainment, and research and engineering, because those were broken out when at &L was broken into two. Uh, category. So we work for the A&S side, but there is small business, SBIR and technology is homeroomed in, in R&E. So we need to make sure that we're working together, small business across uh, the DOD portfolio. So that's there. Uh, we wanted to show you what, what, he, uh, what the boss says uh, is SECDEF about small business. Uh, then they have three strategic objectives uh, that are there for the DOD small business uh, strategy that maps to the national defense strategy. So imagine that as we, as we drill down. So we, they want to create a unified com a structure for all small business across DOD. They want to make sure that DOD's practices, the small business practices, align to the national defense strategy because that's what we get mapped to. we got to make sure we're meeting the, the goals of the national defense strategy, the lines of effort. And then the last thing is uh, making sure that, uh, that we have small businesses in the industrial base uh, that can meet our warfighter needs. One of the things that we're looking at, uh, DOD is looking at, is you know we're spending uh, money, more money going to small businesses, but the number of small businesses in our in our uh, industrial base is shrinking, so that's a concern. Uh, you know, you want to make sure you got a robust and a competitive uh, industrial base and and a healthy small business uh, industrial base supporting that. Next is the six goals of acquisition and sustainment. So we, you know, drill down Ms. Lord, she's a and S. So we have, you know, what she's looking for. So again, this is what the focus is. She's the chief weapons buyer for the department. So if you're looking to do business with us, we really recommend you know kind of what are the priorities. What's the strategic focus uh, that the department's doing? And we look to buy products and services. How might you fit in, okay? And then this is, where this is a toolkit for defense acquisition. Uh, I, I don't. I, I kind of like to get a get a feel for how many folks uh, have ever seen this, just to get an idea, because it's really been out there uh, almost a year. I think February is when it, we we finally had the final version that was deployed. There was a couple uh, pilot versions, uh, but this I think I think it was February or March when it was really published. So this is what this is, and it, it is owned by Industrial Policy. So this link takes you right to where it goes. But if you click on the hot link here. It'll take you to a interactive PDF. Okay, and I got to downsize this a wee bit, maybe. Uh, 
I don't know if I can, well, we'll keep it big so you can see it. So this is what they, this is what industrial policy put together with some input from the small business office. So they came up with five steps and this is really for industry saying, hey, the lights on motel six, we want to do business with you. Here's how you kind of get into doing business with DOD. This is technology heavy. It's not really written for a service company, although there are things here that could do it, but it's really for companies that really do technology. So the basic stuff, you know, PSCs and NAICS codes, then you get registered, you got your DUNS number, you know, the uh, system for award management or beta, it's now beta SAM, uh, you know, the cage code, uh, learning about small business, you know, generally to 500 employees, that's what SBA uses, that's technology companies, SBIR companies, and you can use, this is pretty cool, there's an SBA size standard tool that you can get in there and figure out and, and how to map to uh, the NAICS codes and size standards, so that's, you can do it all interactive. The Small Business Administration, DOD OSBP and DOD Small Business and Technology Partnership Office. So there's more than one office that small businesses can get into uh, to get into our uh, on our radar scope. And we want everybody, government and industry, to know how to do that. Because if you're a small business professional, you might get a phone call from a small business saying, hey, I talked to the Small Business and Technology Partnership Office. They recommended I go to you know, NAVC, or I go to, uh, you know, um, Air Force Pacific and talk to you. So, you, you know, you, you need to know where all the entry points are. Here's how to search for things that are opportunities, Beta SAM, Federal Supply Codes, FedMall, Subnet, look, if you're looking for subcontracting opportunities, GSA Acquisition Gateway, there's a whole lot of information about GSA, and then other transactions, there's a lot of stuff going on with OTs. Those are opportunities for small businesses. And then how to get more assistance, okay? There's the SBA Federal Contracting Guide, how to locate a, a, a particular small business specialist. We always tell the small businesses, go find the small business professional at the lowest level you can. So if you want to work with NAVAIR, go find the small business specialist at NAVAIR. It's not really going to be very helpful to try to get a hold of Mr. Jimmy Smith and say, Hey, I think uh, I can support this requirement that NAVAIR has got under forecast. Uh, how to work with your procurement technical assistance center. It's funded by federal and state money. They work with their local federal agencies. They're very, very smart about what goes on. So if you work uh, looking to get an opportunity in San Diego, you might want to work with the PTAC that supports San Diego and Orange County and work with them because they work very closely with the federal buyers and the state buyers. Local Manufacturing Extension Partnership, if you're, if you're a manufacturer. The rest of the stuff is really all the technology, whether it's attending events, pitch days, uh, Army Innovation. Here's a shout out for Navy, Marine Corps, Naval X. You got it there. Trusted Capital. How to how to make sure that the money that's coming to these small businesses is not being is coming from North Korea or Iran. We want to make sure that the money that's supporting these businesses uh, we can trust. Uh, technology. How to meet technology experts. How to do innovation. Where all the research labs are. Okay, Air Force Research Lab, ONR, and then a step-by-step -step approach. This takes you to the DOD uh, guide here, the website for DOD and defense acquisition. So that was all important stuff there. Now, what? let me see if I click, hopefully this will take me out of that doc. No, did it take me out of the whole website? Yes, it did. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to do that, okay. And while you're getting back yep. in, Ken, um, what I will add is that we have uh, provided some links to uh, the DAU website, as well as these documents on the Navy Office of Small Business Programs website. Okay, so um, so that's the high level. So I would recommend if you're a small business professional, you have that handy dandy in your uh, acquisition portfolio and how to, how to access that, because those hot links uh, could take you right to places you would need to go. Industry, same thing. Then we have getting started in 10 easy steps. Doesn't mean there has to be 10. I think the Army document had 10. I don't know if the Navy had a step process, the Air Force, uh, sort of similar, but DOD 
and the Army, I think, were kind of using a 10-step process. So we kind of took the 10-step process and we kind of re-wickered a couple things, color-coded it, kind of put you kind of on a highway. You know, you get, you get on here and there's several places you can go and exit ramps or things you kind of need to go through. So I'm not going to walk through the whole thing, but, uh, you know, enlist your support network. You know, you got a whole lot of things. And this is where we talk about the PTAP program, Small Business Development Centers, and Small Business PCRs. There's a whole lot of folks out there that help DOD, DOD with the business. Understand the rules of the road. So whether it's FAR, DFAR, you know, we're governed by a lot of uh, rules. There's the dynamic small business search. Understand what that means, how to get into it, how to search. Target your market. Okay, find your niche. You can't be everything. Create your capability statement. Map your capabilities to the opportunities that the uh, command or the service that you're looking to do that helps them a lot. So if you can say, hey, I see your need. This is what we do, and I can map to that. That makes things very helpful. Identify prime or subcontracting. If you're early in the acquisition process, new to DOD business, look for those subcontracting opportunities. you got to pound the pavement, even virtually. There's no other way to get around it. Bid. You got to bid, win, and then you got to provide stellar performance. So you don't stop here when you win. It really game on when you win that contract. That first night you pop the champagne, we won the contract. Then it's like, oh my gosh, we won the contract. We got to provide stellar performance. Okay. Let me see. So just to add to that, I can. We are, uh, the Navy is in the process of updating our 10 steps and what we will be looking at will be uh, basically a two-phased approach procurement readiness so companies getting um, everything ready up to doing business with the dawn and like you said you win that contract but at the end performance is key okay apps thanks rvs okay then we want to show a partnership this, you know, this is a partnership between industry and, and DOD. Uh, this is not only for small business. So there's small business roles, and there's other than small business roles. So we know the large businesses uh, work with DAU very closely. So we want to make sure that we're we're working with them, but we're also encouraging them that hey, we're well, we're paying attention what's going on. So this is the partnership between. Uh, DOD and in industrial base. Uh, these are some fun facts. We got them from the Small Business Office, Office of Advocacy. So there's some frequently asked questions. You can pull that down and, you know, you can be at a, at a you know, elevator speech or a quick meeting with someone and you can have, you know, some fun and accurate small business statistics at your uh, ready to go here. Okay, this is something that uh, we talked about for a long time. I remember when I was in small business at NavAir working with a lot of folks. We said, you know, there's things that small businesses can do that help them, and there's certain things that small businesses might do that maybe don't help them as much with their pitch. So there were some examples out there. So I pulled them together and worked on it for a little while, and I put together a PDF that kind of is a best practices of do and don't and these aren't you know these aren't you know these aren't DAU you know legend or there or anything these are just from years of working in in the industry of small business so you look at the Duke column and these are really written for industry so for example do always be ready to give an elevator speech you're always ready to make sure that you can have that 30 second one minute speech and say exactly what you do be prepared for lots of closed doors before one opens. A lot of small businesses don't understand. They think that they get that 8A certification or they're on, you know, a GSA contract or they're on C4D and, you know, the government is going to be knocking them over to give them contracts, okay? Make sure you keep things current, okay? Nothing looks worse. And, you know, everybody does it. I'm sure DAU has it too, uh, a website that has outdated information. So make sure everything's current, Um Lead with your capabilities, not your small business status. How can you meet the customer's needs? So these are kind of information things you can do uh, to help you with your marketing and your pitch. And then there's the don'ts. Okay, don't overextend your cash or your workforce. Do not set yourself up for failure. Nothing hurts worse than going out of business. It's bad for your Christmas bonus program, and it hurts DOD because we put you on contract because we needed what you provided. Okay, say I can do anything you want me to do. Nobody can do everything. So that's not the way to talk to a government customer. Okay, don't just say yes. Make sure you know what your capabilities are. Don't bite off more than you can chew. 
Uh, here's one that we all, and this is even in a virtual environment, don't just send blanket emails that lack information on what your company does, or don't just blast out an email and market every small business professional in the Air Force and say, hey, I'm company ABC, and this is what I do. Anybody interested, call me. You know, make sure that you're going through this and thinking about how you can better prepare yourself to understand what the agency needs are, how they buy, and then how you can help them get there. That's what they're really looking for. I think that will help you be much more successful. And RV, so if there's any questions, you just jump right in there anytime. And then here's the uh, All Things Small Business podcast that I talked about. So on the podcast, they generally last about 20 minutes, give or take a few. So I think there's uh, one or two that are a little less than 20. One's a little more than 20. Uh, I have the introduction and the closing. It's a standard uh, opening and closing. I don't actually do the actual po podcast interview. I actually find the uh, potential interviewees, do a, a, a practice rehearsal with them, set up the game plan, and then we have a, a gentleman, Anthony Rotolo, who's a professional podcaster at DAU. He does the actual podcast interview and does all the engineering and gets it posted. These are things that it talks about. So if it relates to small business in any way, then we probably want to get it. Uh, right now, the first three and the next two will have all industry speakers, but we will have uh, government speakers uh, as well. It is generally the interviewer, Anthony and one guest. We don't do a panel. We were going to do that initially, and we said, no, nope, we want to focus on one person. What we try to do is draw out a story because everything is different. There might be three women-owned small businesses, and they might have all three different stories because of the way they establish themselves, the market, their space that they're in, the agencies they support in, within DOD, uh, COVID uh, impacts, all kinds of things. So we want to get this to be an individual story every episode. You can go to this, listen now, it'll take you to the three that are posted, and you can click on the one uh, that you want to uh, to listen to. Uh, the last one uh, was a construction company out of San Diego. So if you're uh, NAVFAC and you want to learn uh, a little bit more about what a women-owned small business has been out in San Diego for about 20 years doing business with the Navy and the Army Corps of Engineers and some of the things that are some of their barriers or some of the lessons that they've learned, uh, that's all in there. That would be a great uh, tool you could use as a learning asset. And then there's industry resources. These are all hot links. We came up with six categories, researching business opportunities. Uh, so that's how to find, like USA spending, where's the money being spent? What are the resources from the Department of Defense? So this is the DOD and the Army, Navy, Air Force, uh, OS, uh, Office of Small Business Programs. So this should take you right to the Navy Office of Small Business Program website. How to make it easy for your customer, okay? So you can do GSE. Uh, purchasing programs, smart pay, knowing where you fit on a size standard tool, uh, how to conduct business. We did the old Navy uh, Marine Corps video. It was done a, uh, about two years ago uh, when they were doing uh, videos. We have that because that was a very good video. Uh, commercial acquisition resources, how to do commercial acquisition. That may f fix things. Registering your company, all the places you need to be and what you need to know. Exploring small business programs, whether it's uh, all small men and protege with the SBA, women owned, hub zone, uh, STTR, uh, the FAST, the Federal and State Technology Program, DOD Rapid Innovation Fund, when they'll be funding on it, and understanding acquisition policies, whether it's the FAR, uh, DFAR, a DAU glossary for small business terminology, a guide to marketing DOD, which is from the uh, DOD OSBP, and how to find local assistance. So uh, this is something that we thought was a good resource, and I think it would help everybody. Uh, if you have uh, recommendations to make this better, it's a living document. Uh, I add things. Well, I don't. I recommend they get added, uh, not the IT uh, team, but uh, I recommend that we add or delete things uh, appropriately. So if you see something that you think that would make this better for you as an industry or government perspective, please send it to me and I'll see what we can do. Uh, we want to make this a premier place to go. I will tell you, when I came to DAU, I had spent almost uh, 2008 to 2019 in the small business, actually 2002 to 2019 in the small business community in industry, 
and government. And I never once thought I should go to a DAU website to learn how to do business with the, uh, the federal government or to get resources to coach and mentor small businesses. But here it is. And it's, it's sort of fresh bread. So with that, let's go back to stop sharing. And we're going to go back to the slides. And looking on time chat, we're almost out of time. I'm yeah. took a lot of time. Yep. So I just want to get to the one more, uh, one or two more slides. I think we're done. Did, uh, did, do you have the slides up, uh, Destiny? Again, we we'll stop sharing the uh, screen. She's pulling it up. Yep. Now. Okay. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. This is a webinar that DoD OSBP uh, hosts with. Uh, we hosted at DAU for DOD OSBP. Uh, they've been doing them since April. We started hosting, I think, in July. So there's several thousand participants in this series so far. The last one was on the PTAC or PTAP program. Uh, so they happen every couple of weeks, usually a Wednesday afternoon, mid month, three to four. I really recommend that you go up the DOD website. Uh, get on the mailing list so you can follow the battle rhythm. And if there's a topic that interests you, industry or government, get involved and listen in. Uh, there's about 45 minutes of presentation and then Q&A. Next. Next slide. Okay. Uh, all things small business. We talked about that already. So we d detail there. Next. Okay. Uh, one, I think there's one or two more important slides and then we're done here. Uh, you can get you can get college credit. We talked about that next. Lots of job tools. You can find them. So if you're if you're connected, you can get into them and get these tools next. Knowledge repository. Lots of stuff on cyber. So you can use this as a great resource uh, for your tools there. Okay, next. Keep uh, communities of practice again. Information. Let me see. I got to get to slide 20 next because that's that's important. Uh, one more. Okay, this is the last important slide. Oh, go back one. Go back one there, uh, Destiny. Okay. Uh, I don't know why it keeps. Why well, I don't know why it keeps forwarding. All right, well, I'll just talk to it. Uh, it's uh, no, what, Can you go forward one? It's the Okta slide, the blue slide. Okay, this slide here, Okta. Uh, it is a ver validation verification security system. So if you already have an account with DAU, you should have gotten an email from DAU saying access the Okta link that was sent to you. Register your account in Okta security system. So that should be done if you if you are if you haven't gotten one and you try to register for a DAU course, you may have a problem. So you might have to contact the help desk. If you're industry and you have not gotten into a DAU system before, you, you, that may be an issue as well. So I just want to let everybody know that there's another level of security now uh, on DAU They're using the Okta the system. So uh, that's it for the. There's one or two slides left. It's all generic stuff. You get them. Uh, I will be happy to take any questions uh, before we shut down. Uh, so we probably have time uh, really quickly. One question that we did have was you talked about pound the pavement. You have any recommendations uh, for industry that's on the line about pounding the pavement with the small business professionals across all the services? Well, when I say pound the pavement, I think it means that go out and, and meeting uh, the customers uh, as best you can. Um, and the small business community, government is use, is always very welcoming and willing to have you come in and, and talk to them and coach and mentor you. So I I'd recommend you do that. You listen to what they say, follow their instructions, and they will help get you introduced to the government buyers, the contracting officers, the, the program managers, but make sure that you're on your A game and you know what to do. Listen to what the small business professionals are telling you to do. Be prepared for the meetings and, and work that as best you can. Work your contacts, work your network, but always make sure you're doing your homework. Be persistent, be professional about the whole thing. And remember, it's it's a marathon. It is not a sprint. It's a long, you got to play the long game. Yes. And what I will add to that is on the Navy Small Business Programs website, 
we do have the points of contact uh, for the small business directors at each of the buying commands, as well as the small business professionals across the Department of Navy. So I would like to thank you, Ken, for taking time out of your busy day to join us today. You've provided a wealth of information. Uh, we will have the slides available and also the recording of this uh, webinar on a link on our website, but it will be posted on our YouTube channel, the Don OSBP YouTube channel. So thank you, Ken. Thank you, Destiny. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. Have a good one. Stay safe and healthy.